Okay. So GPT-4 can crawl the internet now, and there's also plugins. So you can use both. You, and you could tell it, like, give me the sources and make sure the sources are from the government, for example. Like, use government sources. Like, it'll go into government websites and see the, you know, the tables they have here and the PDFs. And it'll do part of the work to try and understand that and give you the information. Because I remember I asked it something maybe a week ago and it gave us the answer. We were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, this is not an official source. You're about to hear a conversation between two agency owners who collectively have over 30 years of experience helping brands sell millions of dollars. Enjoy the episode. What I was telling you is that, uh, you know, a few things with marketing and promotion and all that stuff, but like right now, since we are a show that talks about, you know, marketing and agencies and things that are, you know, that, that are happening and how can people who listen to this podcast can actually implement things in their own business. Um, you know, the current discussion that we're having here, and I think that this would be relevant not only to me, but anybody who is also in the same spot is, is you know, the buzzword is here is, you know, AI this, yeah. AI that, or do you automize, auto, do you make automatization with your system? How can AI really help you? And, you know, I think that this is a great opportunity for us to, to converse about this, because I know you know more about AI than I do, and there's, you know, there's also a little world that is still limited to you as well, but... With me, and currently, I, I am aware of how fast you can do things with AI, and in particular with, you know, the basic, which would be copyright. Yeah. You know, just from, hey, uh, you know, boss or, you know, client says, hey, uh, you know, I, I really would like three concepts for, you know, a new marketing campaign. You know, yeah, you can have some from the gut and they come up with your head and you can be creative. But you can also get some of those ideas also being pitched to you by the bot first going to chat GPT saying, hey, I need three ideas for a marketing campaign for a typical serial. And I'll give you three marketing campaigns. And then you can say, well, let me see which one I like and then improve on. So that's prompting. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's basically what where my knowledge of the system is and where I use it for my day-to-day -day business operations. Yeah. Um, but I am more curious with the fact of, you know, seeing that real world of how I can improve on things within my business. So one example would be, okay, so now I have three different options for for campaigns. Okay. Within this campaign that I have liked, I need, you know, three advertisements for Facebook. Chat GPT will give you three advertisements for Facebook and then you have that. I still believe that you still have three. So my first question is AI, do you still can you still grab this content and directly implement it into like media and things like that, or no, that's the always work that needs to be done then. Well, that would be for one of, one of, that would be for our social media part of the business. Yeah, so what you're saying is you need to build a campaign, so you need the art for the ad, and then you need to put it into meta, which is Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you need to tell it, this is the segment of the market I want, and this is, you know, the geography, you have to do all of the segmentation and then yeah. your bid and then place the ad. And you want to know where AI can help with that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think there's, there's a couple of things. One is, one is, I think it's, I really, really think it's, it's more of a mindset than anything else yeah so so i think you everybody knows ai is um is available but it takes a particular mindset to say i'm going to stop what i'm doing because most people just you know we, we sort of work on automatic right we have to do this and so sit down and do it but it takes like a mind shift in, in saying okay i'm going to sit down wait can i do this easier can maybe can I delegate this to an AI? Can maybe like I can leverage that and finish this in half the time? Um, you don't have to ask yourself all those questions. You just have to remind yourself that it's there for you and that you can use it. Um, that's that, I think that's one thing. And then the other I think is um, obviously like getting to know all these different systems, right? Because everybody thinks ChatGPT and like that's you know that's the first thing that comes to mind. But there's a bunch of other ones, right? So I think in the case of meta and AI, I think 
think what you could do is probably get the concept art for the ad um, from, I would say there are, like, there's a bunch of sources, but I, I would say the most popular ones are uh, Dali from, from, from ChatGPT, from OpenAI. So if you pay, if you pay the 20 bucks for the, um, for the OpenAI, for the ChatGPT plus or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. the premium version, you get, you get Dali included, which is nice, you know? Oh, that's yeah. And, um, and, and so, so it's all included within the $20 and, um, what you can do with that, Dali is actually pretty good at, at words. Um, it's not incredible, but it's fairly accurate. And I think that's a nice. It works? Yeah, it works. The, the words. problem is, for example, if you use Mid Journey, which, is, which also does art, Mid Journey does a, does a design work and all that stuff. Um, mid, if you say, if you, if you're in the prompt, you say, I want an ad and I want the ad to say 50% off, uh, Mid Journey will have a hard time doing that. Like it, it can't do numbers very well. It can't do letters very well on top of the art. Like it'll look weird. So you'll definitely need to turn that JPEG or whatever, you know, that uh, PNG image. You'll have to turn it into a vector, put it into Photoshop, and then have a designer fix it. Because Mid Journey can't do letters very well or numbers. Um, Dali can do numbers and letters really well. But I, I from having used both, I think Mid Journey is on a different tier in terms of art design and graphic design. It'll do something really like incredible. And if you want something that looks more like a like an actual photograph taken by a you know a, a Canon camera or something very you know, very professional, Mid Journey is what you need. Dali can't really do that. Like I've, we've tried so several times. In senses of a business, maybe Mid Journey can give you the image. My uh, graphic design team can put the letter. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, the, the the trick though is I, I, that's hard though because sometimes the image that it gives you will be sort of crowded and very like um, balanced, so it might be difficult for the designer to go in there and put letters in. You can still you can still ask Midjourney to put letters in. Like you can say, create a sign that says a uh, neon sign on top of a big city that says, you know, um, Black Friday. Monkey, huh? Black right, right, yeah. Um, and Mid Journey will probably not do the letters very well, but then you can go in and fix that. But then you have the space for the letters. But if you don't ask it for the letters, just say a big neon sign, or just, like it, it, you know, it might not work that well for the designer. But Dali is actually really good at that. So if you need design work that's more cartoonish, I would say, more like a you know, draw a cute puppy in a field. Um, that kind of stuff. Dali is excellent. Or you could say, I need, I need the design work with all that already has like the, the letters on it Then I would use Dali, which is the 20 bucks with ChatGPT. I still think you're going to have to pay the 20 bucks for other things anyway. So you'll, you can just try Dali and see if it works. So for example, we tried using Dali for an image for an article. So we have the article written and we wanted a picture, we wanted a picture, but we wanted something that looked really professional, like an actual photograph. And we couldn't do it with Dali. We tried, we prompted it, we tried several times. So you asked how you asked like, hey, have you know have somebody taking a bite of a sandwich. Yeah. That has, you know, bacon and all that stuff. Yeah. And you just fell short. It it, it can do it, but it looks looks kind of cartoonish or it looks like it's done by a designer who, who drew it. It, it. And then I said, I want it like a photograph. I want it HD. I want it like it you know, taken by a Canon camera with these specifications. And it still produced something that was close, but it, it's, it, you can still see it and say like, oh, that's not really a photograph. But Mid Journey instead is off the charts on that. Like Mid Journey will look like you took the photo with your iPhone. Um, so so Mid Journey is really good for that. So I think what you could do is pay the 20 bucks for ChatGPT premium. Anyway, you're going to use it for copy writing for maybe analyzing data with data analysis. You can build your own bots there. There's a bunch of things there. And, and so, if you need something more cartoonish, you go to Dali or with words. And if not, you go to mid journey. Okay. So let's talk about, okay. So for example, um, analyzing data. So I can grab and you know, ideally about hey, create me five advertisements. I put them in. I put them in Meta. 
five advertisements come, they come back, they give me the number. I mean, five, I can definitely yeah, yeah, do. Just course. look at, you know, I had 30 advertisements yeah. running. Then I can grab the data, like export the data, grab that data, put it on the prompter and say, hey, tell me from this, which is the advertisement that did the best on, on the one that had the most, uh, the best for my buck, you know, the best with that one. That one that was the, the best cost efficient and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Brr, AI will speak. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you, were, you, so you put it into a, an Excel file? And then you use data analysis. So if you, when you open uh, ChatGPT, you'll see you can talk to GPT-4, you can talk to DALI, you can talk to data analysis, and then you can talk to other bots people have created. But let's say you can, you're going to stick to the ones OpenAI did. Data analysis is the one you want to talk to. So you go into data analysis, you upload the file, you upload the Excel file, and then you, you prompt it. You say, I want to know which campaign did the best. Can you cross this information with this other data? Uh, if you were to launch, you can't like, you know what I mean? Like you can ask it a bunch of questions. Like you would ask a data analyst. So you, and you have to have like your own side microphone to do this. So right now, like I'm talking to you through, uh, through a camera, you know, microphone. So you kind of, you, you can be able to use that. To use what though? Because you were saying you can actually can talk. To oh, you can talk to it now. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't do that with data analysis. I would type it out. I don't know if data analysis lets you talk. I'd have to check. Um, but I think it doesn't let you, like in that case, you upload the file. So there's a little icon, that, like the attachment button and you click on that and it opens up and you can, um, you can upload your file and then you can ask it like, oh, based on CTR, which campaign best or which, can, well, or, you know, according to what the information I'm giving you, which campaign did the best in terms of return on ad spend or whatever. And then it'll it'll analyze the data and give it back to you. It's that I'm sure it can do really easily. So you can do both. So, so one of the ways we're using Dali, for example, is we can do, you can we can do thumbnails for YouTube videos. So some of the thumbnails we do, um, we're using Dali to produce the thumbnail. So we'll have like the the title of the video, and then we'll tell it like we'll prompt it like this is for a YouTube video. Da, da, da. We'll give it the, the description and then it'll give us the image. Um, so you can use that for your ads. You can use probably Dali for your ads. Um, if not, if you want to fix something that a designer can fix it quickly, I think you can turn it into a vector, put it into Photoshop or whatever and fix it. Um, and um, so that would be one thing. And then the other thing is what you just said. You can, once you have the data from the ads that have been running, you can, um, um, you know, you can export that and have it analyze it for you. Okay. So, so then you said also, okay, so those were the, pretty much I gave you that. I, I kind of knew that these are yeah. things that you can do. Let's talk about bots. Well, what, what is the type of bot that, what are these bots and what do they do? Because I know what regular, you know, I know a chat bot would be, but yeah, yeah. So they they built something called GPTs. They they launched it a few weeks ago, um, and basically, what the what it does is it allows you to build a bot using your information. And so people and they have like a marketplace that people are loading their bots on. So I can create a bot that's a specialist in content marketing, for example, and I've uploaded data around content marketing so it knows you know nuances and it knows very specific details and i can say if you ever need you know an article or if you never need to talk about content marketing this is the bot and i put it up there and people can use it um eventually i think OpenAI will pay developers who are doing that so this is gonna like come on so this will be like a plugin on wordpress kind of yeah it's gonna like wordpress is open then there's an agency a company that does a plugin that particular does kind of you need a calendar yeah. this is the yeah. plugin that you can put onto it's, your yeah thing. it's smart that you use and you're like okay i like it so this is okay so now but it's different right hold, hold on because open also like ChatGPT also has plugins so that already exists like there's a bunch of people that have done plugins for finance for um to crawl the web, to the read PDFs. There was a bunch, like back in the day when they had plugins, I mean, they still have them, but back in the day, it was like the main thing was plugins. But now they, they, they launched something called GPTs 
which means people that don't know how to code can build their own bots. And so, for example, you could build a bot that knows about marketing in motion. And you could say, I'm sorry, not marketing in motion, <laughs> in Great 180. Like, like, create 180, right? You can build a bot and you can upload the your, your the text that's on your website. You can upload your sales presentation, your case studies, whatever you need to upload so it knows. You give it that information and then you can chat with it. And you can say, you know, based on what you know from Create 180, please create a you know a sales pitch for this product of ours. And then it can it can type it up because it has context. Um, this is something we were doing manually. Remember, I, I remember. I don't know if you remember. We, we yeah. had done that. So we did ours with a developer. We were able to embed a lot more information. Um, from what I've seen, you can embed up to ten files on on the GPTs for now. I don't know if that's going to change, right? You can embed up to ten files, um, PDFs, whatever you have, and then it'll read that information and have context. So you can build your own create one eighty bot that can help you with like you know maybe your social media posts or something that you need for your sales page and email, whatever. You is it, so the way that I'm hearing you say it is like, well, you know, as an agency, I have 10 clients. So you can create a bot that it gives information on the 10 clients of the campaign or the branding that you have. And then that bot would think like, hi, I am brand so-and-so. My qualities is that I am the best in price in the market. Um, I do really, I, as a company, do well this, this, and this. I have these quantity of employees. My culture is this, this, and this. So then I can start talking to it as if it was the actual yeah. persona. It's, yeah, so it's it's basically, yeah, it's basically that. You can tell it, like, uh, this is the information for Create 180. And then, so it's it's like a chat GPT that's personalized for you. And so then you can share it with, you know, whoever you want. And say, look, this is the create. Look, you can share it with your team, for example, and then your team can go in and say, I need a social media post that talks about, you know, our latest project. And if it has that information, for the latest project, then it'll give you the post. Or I need, an, you know, a sales pitch for, you know, this service that we do because this client wants this. You have to still have to prompt it, but it'll give you a sales pitch based on the information it knows. So it's a way of building your own sort of ChatGPT with your information. That's the that's the bots part. Um, but now it's so so that's one thing you could do. Um, we're actually we're not going to use GPTs, I think, because GPTs are limited. I think the 10 files. I don't know how big the file can be at the test that. Um, but our clients have a lot more than 10 files. Right. So I, I have all the text from the website, let's say. And then, you know, I also have case studies. I have articles. I have all the things. Case studies from the, from the client. Yeah. I have a bunch of stuff. I have brochures. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, if you are a company that has plenty of banks, like, sorry, if you're a bank that has plenty of products. That's what yeah. Yeah. So, and if you had to so like, my, upload 10 products, you, you're pretty much done. Yeah. Or maybe you create a bunch of bots, but maybe that's not very useful. So, so we've had problems with uploading more than 10 files. I don't know if somebody else has been able to do that, but we can only upload up to 10. Um, I have to test the size of the files. I think there's a limit there as well. Otherwise, you can just upload one with everything, but I don't think, you know, I think there's a limit. Um, uh, was it a file being gordito. Yeah, yeah. Gordito ahí. Um, and, um, and so we're going to, what we concluded yesterday, yesterday we had like an offsite with the company. And what we concluded was we're going to build a bot for each of our clients to use internally, not because we do social media posts or anything like that, but because um, it helps us with the creative part of coming up with the idea. So from the audience, we extract the trends and then we use that in our internal committee to help us come up with creative ideas for uh, titles and things for, for different contents. And, um, and it works really well if it has context. So if it knows who the client is, what the case studies are, what it's done, what it doesn't do, like if it, if it, know, have as, if it has information from the company, then it works really well. So we have that for a few clients, but we're going to build it for all of them. Like that's what we decided. But I don't think we're going to use GPTs internally. Like it's it's very easy, right? It's you, you don't have to even code. You can just click and upload the files, and that's it. Um, so it's really easy for for people who don't know how to program. 
But because we have our developer, I think we're just going to use, we're going to build our own because we need to upload a bunch of information. And for now, GPTs have a limit. But if it's something simple where it's like, look, I want to talk about, I'm going to upload this. And this is a like, let's say you're working with the bank and the bank has, you know, three products. You have the documentation for those three products. You want, you want, and you're hired to work on those three products. You can upload that information, create a GPT for the bank. You can use it internally. You, you can also share it with the bank or publicly, but you would use it internally. And you could say, I want the copy out for the social media post. I want, you know, whatever you need. You can also, if you've, so if um, Barely, for example, has done design work and you want to copy out for that design work, you can upload the file to GPT-4 and say, can you give me 10 creative copies, copy outs, you know, like the text that goes on. Yeah. Give me 10 creative copy outs for this art and it will give you, it's like it'll interpret the art and give you whatever it is you you need. So that's another way to use it, you know? Can you also say, hey, is Dali smart enough for to say, hey, this is, you know, this is the client, this is the branding. Just kind of using this as an example. No, I don't know if an example, but like, you know, here I have five images of this campaign. Dali, can you create three more images that follow this template pattern? And he'll do, he'll do it. Yeah, I, I haven't tested that, but I, I know it can do that. Um, I don't know if it does it very well. Um, I've tried doing something similar, which is here's this art. I want something very similar, but I want it to say this or I want it to be these colors. And, you know, it does something sort of similar, but it's not like. It comes out like a Picasso. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, yeah. oh, cute. It's not, okay. it's not something a designer would do. A designer would do something much more accurate. Um, so I think it's probably best to start from zero, um, in creating images. That's been my experience. Mid, mid journey that I, I, I have to say though, that they're different, right? Because Dali, you can actually have a conversation. It's like a bot. So you can say like, I want this, this, and this, and I want you to design this. And you have to tell it what you want and you can be very elaborate and, and it follows the guidelines really specifically. Uh, mid journey is more like. You know, imagine slash a girl in a bathing suit, you know, drinking Coca-Cola at the beach. And, you know, Dali, you have to say, create an image of a girl. You know, it's like a, it's like a human. I would say Dali is more like a human. Majority is more like a computer in the sense that you can just give them the prompt and then it'll follow that instruction. And then you have to change the prompt. So we said at the beach, but, you know, it made it and it wasn't really beautiful. And you, you have to add at the beach, sunny skies, um, blue, you know, blue skies, da, 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 blue water. And then it does, Midjourney will do that image. But Dali, you can say, okay, that's fine, but I need the sky to be blue or I need it to be more sunny. And then it interprets that and does that. You know, it, there's a difference, you know, and then turns up. I get you, I get you. It's like, it's like um, one will deliver a better result, as you're saying. Um, me journey will give you a better result, but me journey needs a little bit more human human explanation and, and direction, while the other one is more of like more easier. It has an easier interface. Yeah, it's easier because you can say like, "I didn't like that image. Change it," and Dali will understand that. Mid journey won't understand that. You'd have to re-give it the whole prompt with what you want to change on on the image. You know, like yeah. there's there's more. It's it's more of a oh okay 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 so so let's say the lead's like okay so they gave me the same scenario person in the sunset drinking a Coca Cola okay great with the lead, it's like uh, I don't like it give me give it to me in a in a sunset we'll do it with um with so that the way in there, oh, I don't like it with the sunset okay I need blue blue waters and all stuff so you just talk to it you'll eventually get there with me journey you have to front it again and say okay. From you don't you cannot say from the same picture you gave me a bomb. I need no, this. no, you can you have to you can edit and then it opens up the prompt again and then you can go into the prompt, delete you know, the power, add sunset, add you know, add specific, and you and you basically change the prompt and then that and then it gives you you know four new images. It's a 
how how much is Midjourney? Midjourney, like I thought it was like something like you have to do like it's kind of like the more you use it, what is it? No, no, it's like I think it's ten bucks a month for the for the for the most basic plan. They have more, they have bigger plans, but I think it's like ten bucks a month. So so obviously like we switched like we we were paying for the gpt4 and paying 20 bucks and we're like it has dolly it's got you know the data analysis it's got gpt4 turbo which is fast and more knowledgeable etc it can browse the web you know like the word turbo also just makes it way cool. <laughs> yeah and uh it, it can browse the web we can do all these things so we're like okay let's just pay for this one but a little a little part of me is like oh man like mid journey was actually really good at images um, you know, just awesome at it. And um, I, I sort of miss it because that Dali is very um, cartoonish sometimes. And then we, we, like we struggled to, we had, we eventually actually had to use stock images for the, for what I was, for what we were trying to do for the picture because Dali it's, couldn't give us a, a good, a good image. That's, that's, uh, I've talked to Al about it because, you know, as she, as one of our core you know, if you, your business, you, your business has, you know, what is it, uh, core capacity, like the best things that you do. One of the best things that we do as an agency is, is the creative. We have, you know, it's an amazing graphic designer, you know, a one winning. So it's one of those things that it's, like, it's very tough because it's like, well, here's a tool that you can actually help, like, that you can, you can, you can get you to, to where you want to be. But then I think that sometimes it's just like, you know, I feel better to, Grab the stock, edit, create, and put that together. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe Dali might be a good. No, no, I think I think she'll probably have a better, more fun with Mid Journey. So she probably, yeah, she might like Mid Journey more. Mid Journey also gives you four images at a time. They're all they're all different. Versus, um, and it has very specific things like you can zoom out and it'll recreate like. Let's say the picture, it's a picture of a mouse and it's sort of zoomed in and you can zoom out and it'll start creating the rest of the room where the mouse is, you know, and it can, you can zoom out and zoom out and zoom out and that's actually pretty cool. Um, and it does humans really well, but photography, all that kind of stuff. So I think she might like Mid Journey more, um, but Dali, since you're already going to pay the 20 bucks for GPT-4 because it's going to help you with other stuff, like to analyze data. And you should you should sell you should sell for open AI. <laughs> I mean you're you're doing a great job right now. No, I I, I see I see what yeah. you're getting at. No, I think I think so uh, uh it, it's a good thing. I mean some people they uh, you know it's kinda like when they brought up the whole concept of Canva and it's like, you know, Canva, they can help you. Yeah. I think it's great for small businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, 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 and if you know for, for a for a business that in Spanish in Venezuela would say, you know, te tienen que sacar la pata del Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like you, you need something really quick, but boom, boom, um, you can do that. But I think, um, I think you know, there is this thing about you know when you give that to uh, like a real, like I don't say real designer, I don't want to offend anybody, but like the designers, they're like, no, you know what, I'm gonna stick with my illustrator and I'm gonna stick with the things that I do really well and the best because it's yeah. the better. But you get a lot of really cool things. Yeah. Right? You know what I think though? I think like. You can also use it as a source of inspiration. So you not yeah. like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you can, the designer, there, there, there are things that you're like, oh, I had never thought of doing like a, like a roller coaster. Maybe, you know, like, why don't we, oh, that's interesting. Let me play around with that. Versus like, I, I was going to do it like, you know, like this, like a train and that's it. I never thought of doing it like a roller coaster, but maybe the uh, AI does. I, I love that what you just brought up because it's it's very interesting because if you go to a designer and say, hey, you know, it's like, hey, Valerie and Noel, like, I really would like, you know, I want, you know, I want the surprise to come out like a jack in the box. I want a really cool urban looking box where the jack pops out and says, you know, whatever. And then they're like, okay, Romulo, you know, that, that's going to take me, you know, a good hour and a half to make done. To, to, to get it done. And then they present me the Jack in the Box and as you say, you know, it comes out to cartoony, to clowny. No, I, I don't want this. I need you to do this again. That's another hour and a half to you and maybe this thing is just going to give you that. Let's see the, the real concept first. And love it. Yeah. Loved it. Don't love it. And move, move, move yeah. forward with it. So, but it's, yeah. so I have a friend who works with 3D stuff and, you know, movies and stuff and they use it as a source of inspiration. They're like, okay, I need I need to create the scene 
for this, you know, for this uh, take we're going to make and um, um, what would that scene look like? And so maybe give it to me in pink or, you know, like you can use it just to, to brainstorm and see what the AI creates and then say, oh, I like this one with this one. Let me see if I can combine those two elements. Uh, so I, I actually think it could help. It could help a lot um, in terms of like that creative process at the beginning, because at the end of the day, it's you're getting inputs and then those inputs stimulate you and you get more creative and then you can mix things together. And then so, so then, okay. So I, lo I love the inspiration. I love, I love the concepts, but still, there's still, there is still the whole fact of, yeah, there's always human involved in this whole this process. It's just, it gives you, just kind of gives you a turbo. You know, it, it enhances your space yeah. and all that. Those can it do can can like AI do things like okay so hey a chat GPT four uh, write me an email about you know Girl Scout cookies you know sell come and buy the Girl Scout cookies for my daughter because we are the, she is in this community and it is the best you know so it writes it to me and I'm like okay now can I tell can I tell the chat GPT hey can you please put this on Mailchimp? Or somehow have it so that it zaps. I don't know. So that it grabs that chat GPT and already puts it into Mailchimp or or a mass email system and then get it done. Yeah. Um, no, you can't. Well, there are some plugins. So there's like a Canva plugin. Um, so if you pay for GPT Premium, you have GPT four. You have data analysis, you have DALI, but you also have GPT-4 with plugins. So you can use GPT-4 GPT with plugins and you'd have to check to see if there's anything that, um, that can integrate with what you want to integrate. So I know Can Canva has one, for example. So you can say, um, so we've used it, for example, we wanted to come up with statistics about content marketing and B2B marketing. So we asked GPT-4 to crawl the internet and find some statistics. Then we said, give it to me in a table. And then we, I think the way it worked, I can't remember very well, but I think the way it works is, I might be wrong about this, but I think the way we did it, it was we used the camera plugin and then we said, okay, here's the, Here's the table with the information. Create, you know, based off of this, um, this template. Create, you know, put, you know, and the filter has like the numbers and everything, and then it, it just prints it out on Canva. Um, I don't know if we use the template. I mean, the plugin or not. I think, or we maybe we downloaded the data. Well, it's it sounds, but it sounds like you can also just grab that information, we'll give it to the link, and say, with this data, create a graphic, and then we'll do it too. Yeah, I think so, but it might not do it at, it, with the template that you need. And we already had the templates in Canva. You know, oh, I mean, like the letters go right. here, the colors of these, like the logo was here. Everything was already set. And so it was just a, it was a fast way to produce a bunch of content. So we tried that for a while. Um, if you need more information, I can ask, um, I got that works with us and she's, she's, she was the one doing all that. And she's really good at that. Um, so, so maybe what I, what I would, well, I think what I would say in terms of email and everything, I think that that's just coming like, I think Gmail is going to have that already. Yeah, or if, if Mailchimp doesn't, you know, Mailchimp or Constant Contact or name name your favorite mass marketing priest. I mean, they will definitely do. The yeah, AI. they might already have it. Like you would, you might want to check and see. They might already have it. So, for example, Notion has AI already built in. And all these tools like, you know, are using that. The other thing too, you said something very interesting. You know, I just asked ChatGPT for to call right into. So if I wanted to say, okay. Internet. Find out how many people, you know, how many people, how many people in their forties have in the United States have a a living will. Can you send it to hunt for you, and then you come back and then get that? Yeah. The data? Yes. So what, what about like? Okay. So GPT four can crawl the internet now, and there's also plugins, so you can use both. You either one. You can use the plugins or the other one. And you could tell it, like, give me the sources and make sure the sources are, you know, from the government, for example. 
like use government sources. Like it'll go into government websites and see the, you know, the tables they have here and the PDFs and that, like it'll do part of the work to try and understand that and give you the information. So it's not just, um, cause I remember I asked it something maybe a week ago and, and, um, he gave us the answer. We were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, this is not an official source. Um, get it from an official source. And so it went into like, Probably on Martinez website. <laughs> right. It's just like some blogger or something. And we were like, no, 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 I need an official source. And so it was like, okay, let me check the transportation, you know, government website and I'll get back to you. And it gave us um, the right information. What about, uh, what about things like, like Nielsen? Like, can you, can they help you get Nielsen ratings and things like that? Or not say already private? I think it's private. Yeah. I think that kind of, I mean, if it's online and it's public, they can get it. But if it's, for example, if you want, well, you're gonna pay for the subscription to to what to Nielsen? No, no, I'm asking for example. I just wonder how powerful it is without, like, if you had to be, for example, hi, I'm looking for an article from the New York Times that talks about, yeah, how relevant, how, how. Uh, disposable lithium batteries in the United States. I knew there's an article in the New York Times that I read. I wanted to find that information. If I try to do that manually, I would have to subscribe to the New York Times. Yeah. And then it can't, it can't Google it and try to find it. Yeah. You know? It can't jump subscriptions. Like it can't, it'll tell you I can't see this website because it requires a subscription. Da, da, da. Like it won't, won't do that. I think it might. What about if you have a subscription? Oh, like you said, yeah. You have but, a No, because th that would require that the AI be an agent, what they call an agent, which is it can do tasks online. So remember I told you about the pizza one where the guy was like, order a pizza. And the AI yeah. went online, dominoes.com, went through the website, clicked, ordered it, typed in the name. Like it, it, was, it was acting like a human. That would require that it input the, the password, login, et cetera, to, to be able to view it. So I can't do that. Um, I mean, you, you, can you, can you make a bug? Can you make a so then he this is a blood for it was a wolf in you? Yeah, could you make a I think you could you make, make a, a bot agent? You can make an agent that could, I mean, you'd have to know how to program though, you'd have to like be a good programmer too. I think, um, you have to teach it to do all these things online and execute tasks. Um, I think there's a function call now on GPT 4, but I'm not very familiar with it, so I don't, I wouldn't, I couldn't talk about that, but um. But yeah, uh, so if you have an article that you want to read and it's blocked by subscription or paywall, like it, opening, I won't, won't help you with that. It can't. It, it'll say I can't violate, you know, paywall, or whatever, copyright or, or that kind of stuff. Yeah. Don't make me break the law. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Um, but I think what you could do is, well, I don't know how you could do that. No, I, I think I think you can think about words around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, just, I, you know, again, you know. But it, 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 we were talking about the statistics the other day. It's like you know, seven out of ten people love, you know, love the big, the, the big match. Right. It's like, who do you, who would, <laughs> yeah. what is the source of people and who are you interviewing yeah. and all these things yeah. and, and then it becomes like, you know, wow, they like they're the public ones that are. The bloggers that talk about, you know, how good Big Mac is. So it's like, yeah. well, and you know, there's an internet bias. Yeah. You know, like, I think we like, probably work, work through that. But, but for example, I think it, I don't know if this is true. We'd have to check, but I think it might be able to find the article and it'll tell you, like, this, you know, maybe, like maybe the title, but it won't necessarily be able to, it won't give you the text or like, you know, you know, like it, it won't. It won't give you the info. It might just give you the title and say this is an article. But the um, you could build that. Like the New York Times has an API with all their articles from you know fifty years ago or more. So you could like potentially connect to the API and then have. I mean, if, if you wanted the New York Times as a source. But how do you connect? How would you connect? So you okay? So talk to me about connecting to the API. What, what does that mean? So the API is. Imagine there's a building and there's a room in the building where people can go in and out and collect information and call things from the building. Like, you know, imagine the, the room has like this. 
It's like a yellow pages. Yeah, it's sort of. Like, so, so imagine you went into the building and you could call the elevator and the elevator would bring down information for you. Um, but you can't get on the elevator. You can just call it and then it'll bring stuff down to you. The rest of the building is blocked. You can't have access. Mm. But I've opened up this room so that anyone who wants to connect can connect. And so that's what these companies do. They open up an API and they say, from this API, you can do these functions. You can make these calls. And you can call the elevator and we'll bring you this information, but it's not going to bring you like our financial data or it won't give you our passwords or it's yeah. all the only the information I want to Sounds like, uh, you know, how, how, when you see like a detective show, when they go into the, 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 wasn't it evidence room? And they're like, I need evidence on case so and so and right. so. And there's like a guy who wrote the other thing. It's yeah, like yeah. It's sort of like that, Ex except you, in that case, I think the evidence would be like everything that's there. Yeah. And in the case, it. it's, like, it's like we're only giving you access to these 10 things, which is the same thing that's happening with OpenAI. So if you wanted to connect, if you wanted to create your own bot, um, apart from, you know, ChatGPT and everything, you could, um, you could basically say, um, I'm going to call the ChatGPT OpenAI API in that, um, and that's going to give you back information. So I send in, I send in the prompt. It creates the text, then it sends it back. But I can't say like I want access to the source code, or I want access to the weights and the models of the. You know, it won't give me that. Same with the bank. Like the bank might open up an API, but you can't say I want the customer's. Email, I mean, password. Like, oh, I want that. Yeah. So, so yeah. The, Don't make me yeah. Yes, so the New York Times has an API, which means they opened up a room in their building, for you know, metaphorically speaking. And you can go in and call past articles. You can do searches. You can do like a bunch of things, right? Um, so you can say like, I want to see all articles related to JFK. Um, da, 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 and then like, you know, it'll, you can extract those articles. The, they, they're selling you that. So they can, they sell you that cool. the information for their, for their stuff. Cool. The, um... And right now, right now, again, it's it's a matter of of, of learning what Joe. So basically, he took me through through the concepts that I, you know, that I understand. That like, you know, you, you can the bot can help you, you know, inspiration. It, sorry, AI can help you with inspiration. It can help you with creating, you know, content. It can help you to develop workflows. You know, you can probably say, "Hey, I have." I have these things, 10 things, and this is what, what about that? Like, I have these 10 things. My priorities are, let's, let's, let's just think about it as a, as a business. Like, you know, my priority one is making money. My priority two is to make sure that my team is, you know, safe and, and happy. My priority three is, uh, is advertisement. You know, these are my three priorities. So from these three priorities, there's a list of 30 things that I gotta do. Can you help me prioritize that? Yeah. In the sense of that? Can we yeah, that? yeah, yeah. You can just give it you give it your to-do list and then it'll tell you, you know, you can tell like give me give me a ranking from one to ten. And it'll put the first ones. So if it's if you if he has like a you know, make the sales call to Jim, it'll probably put that first because then that make that because you said it, you, you know, said like, make money, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Does it understand or you have to say, or you have to tell it like, okay, so this is priority one. Okay, so these are the three priorities. Like, you know, make yeah. money, uh, keep your products happy, three, uh, advertise. So you have to say, okay, so these are my tasks. This task is a one, this task is a two, or the machine already understands whether this is. Oh, no, it understands. It understands. You can just. Oh, right. It'll um you can you can upload the tasks and then you can say you know based on this criteria. Um, organize these tasks, you know, based on these priorities, and then it'll do that. And then you can attack that. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that, that... Well, I think you can just think about your day-to-day -day stuff. So you can say, like, oh, well, I have to write an email. So you can just write it on GPT-4. Um, sometimes the emails are just faster if you do them yourself. Like, if it's like, okay, I'll be there at 10. Like, <laughs> you know. But if it's... I need to explain this concept and this and this and based on this. 
in a very in a very uh, corporate way, yeah. well, professional and not corporate yeah. way. Yeah. Right. You go and stick this up towards your nose. Yeah, <laughs> people use it for that. People use it to break up with people. So there's a, there's a girl that on Reddit, right? You're Jane. <laughs> there's a girl on Reddit I read recently, and she was saying like, I was dating this guy. This guy was really, really nice. We're getting along, and then yeah, I got this text from him, and she's like, it was text. and she's like, am I crazy or is this ChatGPT? Because the text was like, you know, <laughs> I have a great time with you, but I don't really see it going forward. But you know, it's nothing to do with you. Like it was just very eloquent. And she was like, did I just get dumped by, by ChatGPT? Yeah. I, I do imagine, I mean, um, we talked about this before, but like, you know, with people that, you know, that have accents or English, the second language and all that stuff, this is definitely somewhat of a playing field, but then you down something about it. And if you don't add a little bit of your flair, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we have been corresponding for months. And all of a sudden you meet a person and you're like, me, good, happy life. Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Yeah. You know? Yeah. A little more catfishing is going to go down here with these AI. Well, I also think it's interesting because we've, for example, we've um, run hiring, so it's like hiring workflows or campaigns, or whatever you call them, um, like a hiring process to hire people in Brazil. And I don't speak Portuguese, but, um, you know, the whole test is in Portuguese, the correspond like the emails back and forth are in Portuguese, LinkedIn messages are in Portuguese. And all they do is copy paste, you know, what does it say? This is what I want to say back. And I think they have no idea I don't speak Portuguese, right? Um, we're obviously requiring that they- so, Wait until they find right, out. Right, 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 wait until they find out. No, but, but um, no, but we've told them, like you need to speak English or Spanish to be able to work with us. But, um, and we do have people, we already know people that, we already have people that work with us that know Portuguese and that like we, we use that language in the company, but I personally don't know it. So, but I've been using it and, um, and, and yeah. some people in the team, uh, know English really well and others not so well, but now I can't tell because everybody's using ChatGPT, And so we have a newsletter that goes out and that newsletter gets done by someone in Spanish and then it gets translated and it gets, you know, it gets developed and, I read the English version. It's super well done, um, so, and I have, and, and you know, it's. I don't. I don't really know. like. I know it's. We're using ChatGPT, but I don't know if like the person's also editing it and coming kind of going in there. And, correct. I got you. Um, and I, I think it's going. It's funny because you're saying right now it's here the value of real of really multiculturalization. Mm -hmm. Sorry for making this word. Yeah. I don't know if that, but like, you. You know, people can talk and they talk in language and it's business and it's it's uh, now let's call it a boss language that is improved on this. But you know, you still need to know you know what are the you know yeah, Venezuelans and Brazilians are you know close in proximity and there is a lot of Latin things that we share with each other, but there's a lot of things that we don't that we are not complete like 100. percent So that's a cultural that cultural background. So it's a I imagine. This happens in every company where it's like, well, you know, we have to become multicultural. 